Hey guys, Dan here with Hardly Brief Programming. Today we're going to be working on our platform, a tutorial. We're going to, this is episode two. We're going to be taking a look at on how to import some art assets, pretty simple stuff. And then we're going to import our character controller from Unity and, and play around with building a bit of a scene. Uh, so it should be pretty simple. It should be kind of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that you guys are going to find or you might find helpful is in the description below I've included a link to uh, my public github for Hardly Brief Dan and the entire platform of tutorial project is up on github now you should be able to see uh, you should be able to download it from github you'll have all the art assets in the scripts as we go along I'm gonna continue pushing up uh, all the commits that we do uh, when we work on the project and so by the time the video comes out and it's uploaded you should have all the up-to-date information from whatever part we are on the project again like I said in the introduction video in the last episode all this stuff is free for you to, free for you to use do whatever you want with um, I want you guys to have all the material uh, as soon as we're done with it so like I said that will be all available in the off, off the github which uh, the link is in the description below uh, but first, let's look at some artwork. So, uh, last time I showed you guys, oh, I don't have it open anymore. But last time I showed you guys the Inkscape file that I had with some artwork that I created for the project. Uh, and what I've done now is I've created, I've exported them out uh, into separate PNG files. I just labeled, labeled them platform one, two, three, four, and spikes one and two. And then uh, what I've done is. Um, I put them in a folder called Platformer Art, and what you'll find uh, is when in the Unity project you download from GitHub, they'll already be in the Unity project. But if you have your own artwork, this is something uh, to follow along with. So let's say you could decide you don't like my artwork and you created your own for the project. That's perfectly fine. Uh, you guys should definitely try doing that. Uh, let's say you did do that though, and you want to import it. The easiest way is. Uh, if you have separate PNG files, is to just kind of highlight them all. You can hit Control on your keyboard and then drag them into our sprites folder. And you can see in Unity now that they've all shown up. The other way to do it is if you have a sprite sheet, um, which I haven't created here, but we can talk about it in another episode if you guys are curious. Basically, if you have one sheet where all those all these sprites, all these images are on the same sheet, you can use the uh, Unity splicing tool or cutting tool that's built into the Unity 2D and allows you to cut up a spreadsheet or a sprite sheet uh, and get the individual images out of that way. Uh, but I didn't do that. I just go, I just went ahead and imported them. Uh, the Unity file that you'll get from GitHub will have them all in the sprites folder already for you. So you can look forward to that. Um, and which basically what this is going to allow us to do now is we can actually drag and drop some platforms in and create some real basic uh, level. So here I have, that's our camera view, right? So we know our camera view is gonna show all that. We can drag, we can play around with some of these objects. We can drag them down. Uh, so let's say, let me grab that one. I'll grab this platform. Uh, let's do like something like that. We won't get super into building a world yet, but we can, we can have something we can play around with. And da, 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 da. let's do, some spikes. We'll rotate this one. Spikes are fun, so we can do a little sp spike action. Something like that warns the player. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Kind of warns the player, says, hey, don't mess around with this. You could get hurt. Oh. Alright. Something simple, if I go to the game view, this is what the game looks like. So if we had a character, they could go run across, run on these platforms, jump up here, and they know they need to avoid the spikes because they could get hurt, right? Pretty simple stuff. And again, these are just sprites. So they show up in your um, in your hierarchy up here as just as the names of what you've imported them as. Well, a, a good thing to do for levels uh, so that you can kind of remain organized in your hierarchy is go to create and then create empty. Uh, and then just label this like, um, let's say this is our level one. We'll do level one dash one, meaning like so. Like this is world one, level one, uh, and we'll say platforms, all right? Uh, and then what you could do is once you've once you've set them all up the way you want, you can highlight them and you can drag them and drag them under level one platforms, and it just kind of creates your more hierarchy view a little bit more organized, so it doesn't look so cluttered at when we add you know 
if you have a level that's very complex and you have thousands of an, you know thousands potentially thousands of items, you don't want them all spread out in the screen because you'll you'll have one hell of a time going through them all. So let's try to stay organized now, and we'll add a op empty object up top. Uh, but the next thing I wanted to do was import a character controller. So I kind of went back and forth on creating our own character controller, and I think we will make one later. But for now, we're going to use the Unity 2D one that comes with Unity. Uh, it works very well and it's already completed. We can run through the scripts and kind of talk about what happens with it. But uh, in this case, I think it'd be very easy for us to kind of get up and running, get a prototype up and running. We can just use the character controller that they have uh, and then kind of fine tune it and change it the way we need it to work for our specific project. Uh, so the way you do that, let's say you do want to use the Unity one or you have another one that you want to import. And if you don't know how to import it, it's pretty simple. All you do is you go up to assets up here in the top left corner you hit import package and you click the package that you want uh, in the last video we did the unity the visual studios 2015 tools in this video we're going to do 2d right so i'm going to click 2d this window is going to open up it might be a little bit smaller like that on your screen i've kind of expanded it but you can go ahead and read what you're going to get uh, when you import this package and there's a lot in this package and we definitely don't need it all but we're going to go ahead and import it all anyways um, Basically, the big ones here are cross-platform cross input. This allows input from various devices like Android, iOS, and the computer. They all they allow it to work on uh, just through one simple script. Uh, I guess it's it can be kind of complex. Uh, but we have all of our animations for our 2D character, the Robot Boy, which you'll see in just a moment if you don't know uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, there's some materials here. There's some platform materials. You can see a little preview over here. Um, some real basic stuff. Kill zone is uh, kill zones are really are in uh, Unreal Engine. They have kill zones. Basically, it's just a zone that just kind of resets your character. Uh, so that's kind of Unity's version of that. They have a pink crate. Just some objects to play around with. They got a whole bunch of different sprites. You can see this is a sprite sheet uh, that Unity uses, and which we can create one later on for our character. Uh, and then a couple controls that we're definitely not going to be using. But there's a lot in here, so definitely take the time to explore it if you have some time. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to import it all. So I'm going to hit all and I'm going to hit import. And it's going to do its thing. It's going to take a few minutes. Uh, but then under our project folder, we'll have an editor folder and a standard assets folder. Uh, the editor folder is going to contain the cross platform input. And then the uh, standard assets folder is going to have a whole bunch of other stuff. And that's what we'll look at real quick. So standard assets, we have 2D cross-platform input and utility. Utility has some prefabs like a FPS controller or a frame count counter. Uh, yeah, FPS counter, I guess. And then under 2D is what we want, though. And they're going to have, under prefabs, they're going to have a character robot boy. Uh, and this is the robot boy you can see up here. That's our character. And we're going to be adding him to our game world. So what I'm going to do, it's very simple, you're going to click the prefab in the project folder and you're going to drag and drop it into our scene view, not our game view. So we are going to drag the character, you can see him here, I'm going to set him down on this platform. We can zoom in and we can see that, hey, our character is indeed above the platform. We can go to game view, you can see it. But we're going to have an issue when I hit play, he's just going to fall. Right, because what we haven't done, and what the big issue here is, there's no collision detection. So this guy doesn't know what he's standing on. Uh, and the basics of collision in Unity 2D, uh, they use colliders. And these are in Unity 3D as well, and you guys might know a lot about them. We've used them before uh, as triggers and such. But colliders are uh, what detect or can help detect collision incidents and trigger events. And as you can see on our robot boy, our robot boy has a circle collider, uh, which is down here, and then a box collider, which is up here. The circle collider for this character controller, and you can go ahead and look through the script if you want, kind of tells you a little bit about what it does. Uh, but this is looking for ground collision, uh, specifically so that we know that we're touching ground. Uh, and then the box collider helps for crouch movements and um, collision up above. But you can adjust all these different sizes. So you see the box collider isn't, so it doesn't go above his head. If you'd like to extend that, you can pl play around with the Y size, right, or the offset of it. Uh, totally up to you what you want to do. Um, the most important thing on here that you see what creates it, gives it mass, is the rigid body 2D. So in 3D, you have rigid body, and Unity 2D, 2D you have the rigid body 2D. It applies. This basically tells Unity that this is a movable object. It has mass. It uh, it 
can be affected by gravity, has all sorts of different drag factors and stuff that you can go into, and then you have different constraints that you can do. Um, and then the two most important scripts on here are the platformer character 2D and the platformer 2D user control. The user control script allows you to use your keyboard for movement of the character. Uh, and then the platformer character 2D script up here allows for some specifics on how we control the character. So this character can run, it can jump, uh, and it can crouch, and it has air control, right? And then we can set different things as ground. So right now, every this is a layer mask. It allows you to, you can select different objects and put them on different layers, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But you can set different objects to be ground and then set certain objects to not be ground. And therefore, it'll either collide, allow him to jump. You can set restrictions within the scripts to allow him to do different things based on what he's touching. Air control just allow, allows this character to move in the air uh, more fluidly. Jump force is the force applied upward uh, for the character to move up in the air. So like how strong he is to move up. And then max speed is how fast this character will run around. Um, but let's add some colliders to our floor here so that our character, we can actually play around with it because that, that should be kind of fun. So what we're going to do is you can individually click all these. So I can go ahead and click Add Component over here. I can go to Physics 2D and I can add a box collider, which adds a, a collider around the entire object, uh, which will now allow, if I press play, allow collision with this object. You can see he's standing on it. He's touching ground. He can do some stuff on it. Um, or... You can click this one, this other uh, platform four I've called it. You can go to add component, you can do physics 2D, and you can add an edge collider. Uh, but you see the offset, <clears throat> you see it's in the middle. So if I go press play again, and I walk onto this platform, I'm gonna walk down into the middle of it. So you see, I'm like, it looks like I'm in the middle of it, right? Oh, and we just fell off the screen. But the, the object, and this might be what you want. So this is a way to make um, make it look like if you, my objects are very flat, but if you create, if some of your artwork shows some depth to it, then you might want uh, artwork to look like this. But uh, we don't have that much. I don't have any depth in these objects, so we're gonna actually move up that offset a little bit. So you see here this green line. Hopefully, it shows up on YouTube. It might be pretty hard to see, but you can you can increase the Y offset so it sits on top of the box rather than in it. Uh, and then if I go back to play, you can see. Okay, now he's on top of it. He's not in the middle of it, right? Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a box collider to this box here. Pretty fitting. Physics 2D uh, box collider. And then what we'll do for this one, the spikes, is going to be a little different. So let's go ahead and press play. We now have a level. We can run into this stuff. We can jump up. But we run into an issue where the spikes don't do anything. So first off, you can add a box collider to it. So if we go to, uh, if again, add component physics 2D box collider 2D, I can press play. I can come up here, I can jump on it, and I'll run into the spikes. Alright, the character, get, he got stuck on the edge of it, but let me hit play again. So you can see he gets stuck on it. He can uh, run up a little bit of it if we want, right? But that might not be the effect that we want. Maybe you want it to be, uh, like at this point, maybe we want him to kind of get stuck in the spikes. So you, what you can do is you can remove it. You can go to Add Component, and you can add a polygon collider. So what that's going to do, polygon colliders will get, uh, will add up very quickly uh, in system resource, like how much they hog, because basically what it's doing is it's going into this collider here. And again, I really hope you guys can see some of these green outlines, but basically it's tracing out what it believes is the shape of this object, and it's putting ed basic hundreds of edge colliders on it. Uh, this object isn't extremely complex, but the larger objects you have, the more complex shapes the collider uh, will get more, can become more and more of a uh, resource hog. So like, let's say you're, tri maybe you want to make a game for Android or iOS, you might want to really limit how many polygon colliders you include or how important that polygon collider might be. So now if I come up to it, he's going to look like he's still run into it, but it's going to be different. He can actually get stuck. Um, and if it was sitting down, he could. If he was small enough, he could get stuck in between the edges. So, like for this instance, it really doesn't make to affect gameplay too much, because we're still doing some of the things. You can kind of see how he's like stepping down, he's falling down. Uh, and again, you might like that effect because it kind of seems like he's actually hitting each spike. So let's say if we wanted to do that, then we could add like a little blood effect or something for him uh, when he falls off. But 
So most likely we'll just keep we'll keep the polygon collider there for now. Um, but that, this is really what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, I just wanted to get a character controller up and running, some basic level stuff, uh, so you guys can play around, get, uh, and then continue getting the project set up. I'm going to add a couple platforms here, just so that we can run around some more uh, and see how far this guy can jump. Yeah, so look, we already got, we haven't done any coding yet, and we already have a game up and running. It doesn't do anything, uh, but it's fun, right? So uh, a couple of things that we're going to be going over in the next video is uh, we're going to start taking a look at how creating the monster class. Uh, we're going to look at uh, how we're going to set up the monster class and its inheritance, all the inheritance levels that we'll have, uh, and we'll start actually getting into a bulk of the programming for uh, this tutorial series. So just to recap, again, a uh, link down below in the description will be for uh, the GitHub page allow you to download all this um, this entire uh, project. It'll be, it should be committed by the time this video goes live. Uh, if you guys got any questions on that, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm working on creating a video to show you guys how to set up your projects with Git and how to use Git yourself so that you don't lose all your projects like I did. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys have a I hope you guys learned something, and I'll talk to you guys uh, later.